Hi, folks. Thanks so much for joining us for our first session of our coding club today. Uh, I know we had a couple of brand new beginners who were expressing that they were a little bit confused. So I wanted to just give us um, a little bit of some step-by-step -step practice that you might find helpful um, to kind of recap the things that um, our, our instructors are talking through today. So I'm right now on the coding site that is linked in the Google Classroom, so the repel.it site. When you click on that link and it opens up this website for you, you'll see that it already gives you a chunk of code um, as well as some basic structure. So this chunk of code um, utilizes a print command, which when we run our code, it's going to print the phrase, hello world. And remember, like we learned today, this is a string, which is one type of variable that we talked about. So when I hit run, it's gonna take a moment to process everything. And depending on the kind of computer you're on, it might take a little bit longer, but it then processes that code, goes through those steps and prints out, hello world. But we're going to practice writing some of our own code today. So in order for us to do this, we are going to start typing right here on line three. And we're actually going to go ahead and I'm just going to comment out by using these slashes, I'm gonna comment out that hello world. So you can see it's now grayed out, which means when I run my program, it's not going to actually process that line of code. So it's still there, I'm not deleting it, I'm just saving it for later. So let's take a look at some of the other types of variables that were introduced to us today. For this, I'm also going to take a look at the teaching guide that we got. It is linked in the Google Classroom. And you can see that there are the explanations of a whole bunch of different variable types. So the ones that we are going to look at first are integers. So remember that integers are whole numbers. So let's go ahead. I'm going to start by declaring a variable and saying that it's going to be an integer. I'm going to name my variable, and I'm just going to start by naming this one t, and then I'm going to assign it a value. So in this case, my integer, which I'm going to call t, is equal to 5. This is kind of like when you have two friends and you're introducing one of them to the other. You don't know what to call someone until you've made that introduction, so that's what we're doing here. We're declaring that variable so we know what to call that variable we know what type of variable it is, and we know its value. I'm also going to declare another integer variable. We're gonna call this one s, and we're going to set this variable equal to two. So now that I have a couple of variables, I can start doing some different uh, arithmetic operations, which that's a very fancy word for us to say, I can start doing some math. I'm gonna start with the super simple one, which is addition. So I'm gonna add these two variables together. Now, in order for me to add these two variables together, I'm gonna to use this system.out.println code. And in these parentheses here is where I'm going to have my code do that arithmetic operation for me. So I'm going to add my two variables together. Don't forget you have to end each line of code with a semicolon and whenever you're doing that system.out.println code, the S does have to be capitalized because JavaScript is case sensitive. So in theory, when I hit the run button, we should get the output of seven because when we actually add five plus two, that's our answer. So it's compiling my code. It's gonna check and see if there are any errors and it's gonna tell me and it worked because we got the output of seven. So now let's try a different arithmetic operator. And in this time, instead of adding our two variables, I'm going to divide t by s. So in real life, if I were writing this out, it would be five divided by two, which would be two with a remainder of one. Now, since these are integers, they are whole numbers, which means any remainder, any decimal, it's not going to show up as part of my code. So when I run this, it just gives me the whole number. So it doesn't tell me 2.5, it just rounds down and tells me two. If I wanted to know what that remainder was, then I can use the arithmetic operator called a modulus.
which is represented by the parenthesis, or not the parenthesis, sorry, the percentage symbol. So I've got one line that's going to give me the whole number and one line that's going to give me the modulus or the remainder that's left over. And when I go ahead and run this code, you'll see just like I got before, um, five divided by two is two, but then I also have the remainder of one. So that's one way that you'll see arithmetic operations happen within the context of Java. Now, if we're actually doing math and we needed to know the decimal, instead of making these integer variables, we instead would make them doubles. So it's a different kind of variable that is listed here in our uh, teaching guide for week one. And so checking that out in order for us to declare that variable, I'm just going to use the word double with a lowercase d. So let me replace this. And I'm just going to leave both of my print lines there. So now since both of my variables are doubles, my output is also going to be a double. So here it gives me that decimal so I can see that t divided by s or 5 divided by 2 is in fact 2.5. Modulus still works even when you're working with um, the double values and variables. Um, so that is still something that you can do here. We can also take this one step further and start adding in strings to our answers so that instead of just having a number up on the screen, it'll also have some text. So in this line, line five of my code, I'm going to add a string of text and it's going to print along with that answer. The string that I'm going to add is, the answer is, and I'm going to add an extra space between the word is and the quotation marks. Then I'm going to add the answer and it's going to print out as a whole sentence that says the answer is 2.5. Just like that. So now that we kind of have some of those basics down, you can play around with this for yourself and try adding in different values for your variables. Try playing around with different variable types and try incorporating a string of text uh, into your output so that you have a sentence at the end that reads the answer is. Head on back to the teaching guide and you can see the challenge for this week was to write a program that creates two numbers and finds the exact value of the first divided by the second use variables and use string combinations to print your answer. So essentially it's saying this is going to be our first variable, which in our practice code we represented as t. This is going to be our second variable, which in our practice code we represent it as s. And in order for us to find the exact value, remember we talked about using two different types of, um, of variables, an integer and a double. Practice, try it with each, see which one you think would be the better option for finding the exact value, and then use that. In your output, use that string to make a full sentence that says the answer is, and then run the code to find the answer.